Hello friends, we're back. And it's been a hot minute since I've recorded anything, so I'm gonna do my best. Uh, I did my base already using a new foundation that I just got, which I'll do like a whole Sephora VIB sale haul at some point. It's very light compared to my skin tone. So I need a different color, but a lot of them were sold out, so I'm not really sure what my plan is. Anyways, what are we doing today? I asked you all over on my Instagram, which is at Caitlin underscore makeup. I do this often. I ask for your opinions and you gave them to me and this is how it happens. So I asked you what you wanted me to see, what you wanted me to film this week. So I asked what you wanted and I voted, or sorry, and you voted for the evolution of makeup again. We're back and better than ever, baby. I'm losing my mind. Um, so here we are with the evolution of makeup. It's been a hot minute, like over a year since I've done an evolution of makeup video, but we're just gonna like hop, skip and jump right over the 1800s and just straight into the 1900s. We're just gonna like pretend like all the European stuff just didn't happen. Elizabethan era was great, but nobody wanted to watch it. I mean, it's not like a time period that people are crazy about, so. We're jumping from 1900 to 1920 to 30 range, like the 1900s through the 1920s, if that makes sense. So we're talking speakeasies, we're talking flappers, we're talking Great Gatsby, Hollywood, glamour, post-war lifestyles here, okay? And we're going to embark on a journey together learning about the history of makeup in the 1900s. So, before we get started, you should subscribe to my channel. It costs you zero and it gives me a lot of serotonin. You should also like and comment on this video if you enjoyed it and you want me to continue the series, 1930s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, 100s, 10s, 20s, here we are, baby, okay? So if you wanna see the rest of the decades in makeup, like this video and tell me down below. And on that note, let's embark on our journey, why don't we? One thing we're gonna change up this time around is I used to do one side historically accurate, one side modern day interpretation. However, now that we're in the 1900s, 1920s, this makeup is much more wearable, much more like still considered modernized to some extent, so I'm not going to do the split face. I'm just gonna do a full face, okay? So that's where we're gonna start off. Now, I just wanna give you some very quick history and facts, but in order to do so, we need to start some makeup. So, one thing that I found, and I have lots of pictures, I will insert them here, but I found a clipping from a magazine back in, I think this was 1930, 1926, sorry, Princess Pat, okay? So this is how to apply rouge. And I'm going to just quickly explain this before we get into like the full history of makeup in that era because otherwise you're gonna be watching me just talk and not doing anything. The main things that they wore on makeup, for makeup, were eyeliner, rouge or blush, and lipstick. Okay, so those three items, very important. And I do understand that for a lot of other cultures in the past that we've talked about, that was also very important. And you just need to know that makeup is always evolving and changing. It's not coming from a brand new idea. We're taking what we know from history and we are working it into modern day and updating it. Every time we're doing one of these video, every decade change, we're getting updated routines, we're getting updated products, and we're working on getting to where we are now in the 2020s. So, let's discuss this, okay? I'm gonna insert a little picture here because I've never seen this and I'm so excited to try it. So, it says, the final beauty touch to your complexion is the warm natural flush of your cheeks, supplied by, Arti why could I not read the word? Supplied by artistic use of rouge and how it emphasizes the beauty and brilliancy of your eyes. 
The correct way to apply it is very important. Nature's own color appears in the form of a V, pointing toward the nose. Apply as shown by the diagram sketch, leaving a white space about the size of a silver quarter in front of the ear. Blend softly over cheeks with puff. Never apply in a hard, round, artificial spot. For waterproof, lasting effect, your rouge should be applied before powdering. Princess Pat Rouge comes in three delightful, original shades. Vivid, brilliant, fashionable, a new and wonderful hue, English tint. The original orange blends naturally with all complexions, blonde, brunette, and medium, pastel rose, for the conservative women. It was 50 cents, and it came in a little tin, and it was adorable. So, we're gonna start talking history while I apply a generous amount of blush onto my cheeks in this so-called V shape to my nose and back, okay? Any who's in, so. In 1909, the first cosmetic counter was seen in London. Uh, Gordon Selfridge is something I wrote down, that must have been the brand. However, when it comes to makeup historically, the brands that we know and love, 1909, Max Factor. That one still exists mainly in the European area. It's not really wide known or well known in uh, the United States, but that is a brand that we should know. And then also in 1909 was the brand L'Oreal, followed by Elizabeth Arden in 1910, and then Maybelline in 1915. So Maybelline was important though, because Maybelline was the first brand to come out with a mascara. And the reason that the brand came out with it, I believe Maybelline was started by a man, and he always watched his sister. Oh yeah, founder Tom Lyle Williams would watch his sister, Mabel, Maybelline, create her own lash makeup using Vaseline and ash from like fires. So she wanted to put something on her eyelashes to make them darker. And she would take ash and mix it with Vaseline and then apply it to her lashes. And so Mr. Tom Lyle Williams said, uh -uh, we gotta make some sort of product that my sister can use and not put literal ash on her face. And that became the Maybelline Cake Mascara, which is in this photo right here. So back in the day, that is how you applied mascara. You used a brush like that, and you also wet that little cake, rubbed your brush in it, and just brushed through your lashes. Obviously, modern day mascara, a lot easier to use. However, that's where we started. So in the 1900s and 1920s, Hollywood really influenced the makeup industry. And the reason that is, is because there was film now. So there was people on camera. And so the actresses had to add makeup to really accentuate their features. So they would darken around their eyes, they would darken their cheeks with blush, they would add the lipstick. And it was all black and white, so that contrast was important. So that's where it all came from. And so in order to emphasize their eyes, they needed products and other people wanted to use them as well. And therefore, companies started to make eye makeup. The other thing that I found super interesting is that the reason beauty started to become so popular was in 1914 when women began working. It was after the war or even during the war to some extent. I honestly don't know my dates very well. I've never been a date person. But when women started to work, they were out of the house. So before they were in the house, they were hanging out, they were doing their thing. They never really left. There was no reason to get dolled up, no reason to look nice. But now they're leaving, they're going to work. And so therefore they're getting themselves ready and doing their makeup every single day to leave. I applied my blush in my little pattern. I did my little V down here, did my V shape like they told me to in my little video, video, no videos back then. I'm just pouncing over it with my sponge to kind of blend it in my hair, but you know, if I use lots of blush, I'm using lots of blush. What are you gonna do? I also have a reference photo of a woman. She does have the more like circular pattern on her cheeks but this 1926 said no thank you. So I did add a decent amount into my cheeks, I just didn't want it to be the only shape. So by 1920, 
Every single pharmacy and department store had beauty counters within them. Very popular. And the products that people were mainly using were powders, lipstick, eyeliner, vanishing cream, which I think would just be a moisturizer, pan sticks, and mascaras. I believe pan sticks had to do with um, eyeliner, like black eyeliner. So let's start with that. So there was a couple different things that people would do. <clears throat> Daytime versus nighttime was different. So during the night, they would occasionally add eyeshadow to their eyes to create like a brown shadow up here. So that's what I'm gonna do while I explain some more things because we're gonna add a little bit of shadow instead of just doing black around our eyes. So I'm dipping into my uh, ColourPop Nude Mood Palette and just taking a brown. I wanted a very neutral brown and I'm just putting it all over my eyes. So what's important though is the actual shape of the eyes in this era. So cat eyes and wings were not fashionable and people would not wear them. Every look that you see from that time period is rounded. So that is what I'm doing. They were simply just rounding out their eyes or making them look more circular, more doll-like, if you will. They are not winging, they are not adding wings, they're not doing any of that. That is not fashionable in the 1900s to the 1920s. So, they would use brown, gray, black, or plum eyeshadow, but I saw a lot more things talking about brown than I did about all the others. However, people could get a little bit more adventurous at the night or during the evening and at nighttime. So sometimes they would. Daytime, you really would just use an eyebrow pencil, a lipstick, and blush. You wouldn't go for the eyeliner. You wouldn't go for the brown eyeshadow. However, once it hit nighttime, you could then do a brighter lipstick. You could add eyeshadow, and then you could add your eyeliner around your eyes, which is the classic we've seen ever since ancient Greece, uh, ancient Egypt, ancient everything, all those cultures, uh, ancient India, they all used eyeliner around their eyes. That's just very common, um, and it really hasn't gone away. Eyeliner and using dark shades to go around your eyes is still incredibly common nowadays, and we can blame our ancestors for that. Um, I'm gonna put a hair under, because this girl looks like she has a little bit under her eyes in my reference photo. Here's what I'm using for reference. I know it's a picture, like a drawing, and it's not a photograph, but I do have one of those as well, which I will show you here. This is a famous actress from the time. Her name is Raquel Torres, and she was also very iconic when it comes to makeup. As you can see in this little photo, she has her big round eyes and very dark eyeshadow, her deep lip. You actually can't see her blush, which means it wasn't super dark, but you can see her eyeliner, her mascara, and also her very elongated brows. We will get into that in a minute. Did anybody else in seventh and eighth grade do like the black all around their eyes and then every time they have to like look at a photo of themselves back in the day, you're like, what was I thinking? Cause that's me every time I do one of these videos where I have to, literally have to put black around my eyes. It's just not flattering. This eye pencil is probably dried out. So we're just gonna do a little black line around our eyes, just like they would. Classic coal eyeliner, super important. I had it written, yep. Um, so it does say that a go-to look and style was black eyeshadow or coal liner for the daring girls. For your eyebrows, they'd be plucked and drawn down toward your temples, very elongated and thin. Your lips were smaller than natural, but that Cupid's bow, was super important, so there was no overdrawing, overlining. You didn't want your lips to look huge. And then rouge were circles for the rounded shape, although that one article said no thank you. And then the lashes were mascara always. It was a new rage, rage, and you would not go without mascara. Every woman will put mascara on when they left their house. Okay, finished the eyeliner off camera and look like a hot mess so we might as well do the one and only mascara 
Well, I just blinked on my mascara twice. It is now all over my lid and my lower lash line. But what are you gonna do? Because this is who I am and how I am, so. Now seeing this woman's photo, I'm going to just tap on a bit more blush. Just gotta make sure our apples are prominent because that is definitely a thing from back then. So, now I am going to do my eyebrows, which are not thin by any means. I have very bushy eyebrows. We are going to do our best. The longer they are, the thinner they will look, but I'm also just gonna try and pull them very much towards my temples. Oh. Foundation sinking into my lines. Not impressed. So they would take their eyebrows and they would extend them down. So your temple is right about here. So we're gonna extend it down that way. I'm probably gonna bring it down to like here. Great, so I drew a line from the end of my tail to that dot. And now I'm gonna draw a line from the top of my tail to that dot as well. Try and keep my brows as thin as possible. Those are my eyebrows. I mean, they're definitely not like as paper thin as the people that you're seeing in these photos that we're referencing, but for the purposes of today and what I'm able to do with what I've got going on, because I'm not gonna over pluck my eyebrows and ruin my face right now. So our last thing to do is lips. I have my lipstick. But there's two things that I find super interesting about lipstick back in the day. Okay, and I actually have one of these products patents up on my wall. And I know I've discussed this before, but when I was doing research for this particular video, which I did months ago, like before I even moved down here, I already had all these notes. I remember doing it in my friend's house in my bedroom, doing all the Googling in my little desk in the corner. And I found Google or patents.google.com and you can find any makeup or any patents in general, but I found makeup patents and there's makeup patents on there from 1910s all the way like modern day and it's super cool so I have four up on my wall and I have them in chronological order and so you get to see how the packaging for makeup products was made back in the 1900s and 1920s 30s 40s 50s all that but there's a thing that they used called a lip tracer you can see this is also Raquel Torres she's putting this lip tracer up to her mouth and essentially it was the perfect lip shape Lip shaping was very important. Like I mentioned before, they would take their lip, sh their lip size and make it slightly smaller, more natural, but their cupid's bow was very important to them. Having that sharp pointed cupid's bow was vital. So they would literally take these lip tracers, which are these pieces of paper with lips cut out. They would put them over their lips and then they would put their lipstick on top and they would create the perfect lip every time. Do I think that lips are universal? No. Do I think that it's possible to make a universal lip tracer? Probably not, which is probably why we don't use them today, but I found that fascinating. So I'm gonna take my red and I am going to put it on my lips. So I'm gonna try to keep them small. I'm actually gonna use this Patrick Ta mirror because I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. I've never opened this product, I don't know why. Okay, so we have a very nice Patrick Ta mirror from our blush. So I'm gonna keep them as close to my natural amount of lips as possible. On my bottom lip, I even just like underlined a little bit. So there is still a little bit of pink poking out underneath on all sides, but honestly, I'm not gonna see it. And I think that that's important. The other thing that I found fascinating and I didn't see a photo of this or anything so I'm not sure what to think about it but there was a fact that I wrote down that said that in this era women would use lip pencils or 
thinner lipsticks, if you will. I don't know how many pencils they really had formulation-wise, but it said lip pencils, probably for lack of a better term. And they would take them and they would color their earlobes and their nostrils and outline their nostrils, probably to accentuate them for film. But I found that very interesting that you would take a lip liner and go around your nostril. And maybe I'll try it. I didn't grab a lip liner, but I should try it just to at least show it to you. Uh, but let's do our top lip where the Cupid's bow is very important to our success. So I'm going to I'd say I did pretty good on my lips. Now I'm gonna go quickly grab a lip pencil. We're gonna try to outline our nostrils. I grabbed my Makeup Forever Artist Color Pencil in the shade 602 Completely Sepia. It's one of my lighter pencils. I didn't think that using a dark one would make a lot of sense. Obviously they're trying to accentuate their features, but I don't know what I'm doing. So we're gonna play it safe. And I also don't know what they did to outline their ears. So I'm just gonna not do that, but I'll do my nose. Let's see. All right, what do we think? I outlined my nostrils from afar. Kind of just makes my nostrils look like I have a coal and I've been rubbing them with a tissue and now it hurts. That's just all I'm getting from this. If I had a better color maybe, I don't know. I don't know what they would do it for. I mean, I guarantee it was for television and it was probably to like give them a cool shape or something. I don't know, but this is my 1920s look. I belong in the Great Gatsby yet? If I showed up to his party, would I turn his head? Would I make him look at me and love me? I don't know. But I get someone's attention, like at least one man's attention there. Anyways, this is it. This is my look. This is what we did. This is our authentic 1900s to 1920s era makeup. We gave you all the facts about the brands that came out. We gave you all the facts about the products, how they started becoming more popular to women and why women started using them, where the influences came from, what their style was, what they wanted to look like, just all of the things. And I feel like we succeeded other than the mascara on my lid, which like this isn't an intense eyeshadow look, so I can kind of just like rub it off. I wouldn't say I can rub it off well, but I rubbed it off. Uh, yeah, so this is it. This is what our fun was tonight. It was our first time diving back into the evolution of makeup in over a year. And I'm glad we're here. I'm glad we're ready to have some fun. And I can't wait to also film all the other book, I book video ideas, one including books that I have in mind. Also next week, I'm going to be doing a gift guide for the people in your life that you don't know what to give. Gifts for the people you don't know. Nope. Creative gift ideas for the person in your life that you don't know what to get. I gotta work on the title, but anyways, just cool creative gift ideas. I feel like I'm a really good gift giver and I get really excited about Christmas every year because I love giving gifts. So I feel like it's my time to shine. It's my time to give you my creative juices and let you steal them and absorb them for yourself and then deliver a phenomenal Christmas gift. That's just my goal in life, really, because I love Christmas. I just love gift giving and making people happy and like seeing how excited they are about the cool things I come up with. So if you like Christmas and if you like gifts, you should subscribe and stick around. Because if you subscribe and you stick around, you'll be able to see that video when it goes live next week at Friday at 4 p.m. I also have a delightful Instagram at Caitlin underscore, nope, at Caitlin Jolene underscore makeup, which I mentioned previously already, but I post a lot over there. We do a Makeup Monday, which is a little quick tutorial to some fun music every Monday. I also post uh, Instagram reels over there, which still are getting much more views than my TikToks, but I also post on TikTok. <laughs> so if you want me to stop hating TikTok, you can go over there and like those videos, follow me over there as well. Um, but I need to take some pictures, I need to take my makeup off, I need to go to bed because I haven't gone to bed early in the last like three nights and it's 10 p.m. 
So I hope you enjoyed this evolution of makeup. I hope you enjoyed me restarting this series and I hope you liked and commented on this video so I know that you wanna see in the 1930s up next. On that note, it's time for me to leave. Arrivederci. I don't even know why that came to my mind, but here we are.